Mr. Morin. For several weeks now, we've sat in the back of the courtroom and said nothing. Today is our turn to speak. I speak for Justin and his mother, who are joined in heaven and watched down on us. His grandparents, his daughter Charlie, her mother Elise, his sister Kelly, his fiance Tiffany, his cousins, his aunts and uncles in the back, thousands of friends, all of those touched by Justin, and his brothers and sisters in blue. We are a proud family. As his father, I can stand here today and say that we raised him right. Please don't think for a second that we're not sad. We think of Justin every minute, every hour of every day. In fact, I still reach my phone on occasion to call him, hear his voice to check on him. That's what a dad does. He was my son, my buddy, my right-hand man. We did scouts. We coached baseball, basketball, football, soccer. We hunted, fished, went to sporting events, everything a dad and a son could do. Justin was fun. Justin grew up watching me. At an early age, I could tell he wanted to follow my footsteps and become a police officer. He, like many of you, was reminded daily of the consequences of bad choices. To think before you act, to work hard for what you want in life, and to achieve your goals. He did well in school, excelled in sports, and was very much liked. He graduated high school, went on to the University of Akron, and received his criminal justice degree. He worked at the Medina Juvenile Detention Center for a couple of years, where he took a huge interest in helping troubled youth. He took an interest in their stories and got a better understanding of how they got there. He always thought that someday he would be able to fix some of those problems. He learned something from everybody. While I was retiring, he again followed in my footsteps to further pursue his career in law enforcement. He attended the Summit County Sheriff's Academy and while there was selected by the city of Akron to become a police officer. We knew he was on the right path and supported his endeavors. Justin then started the Akron Police Academy and after completion became part of the Akron Police Department where he worked trick four, seven at night to three in the morning. He and his partner, Kevin, fought crime on the busiest shift, the busiest, roughest part of town probably. Justin loved his job. He never gave up. He worked hard and continued to learn. I saw success in Justin. As he took on several interests in the police department, I knew that what that he had, what it took to be a good cop, and I was very proud of him. His mother was also very proud of him. Not only as a police officer, but as a concerned son who would be there for her daily. As she battled stage four ovarian cancer. Justin helped her and remained by her side as she continued to battle for two more years. One of her biggest smiles. I can never forget one of her biggest smiles came when Justin informed her that she was going to be a grandma for the first time. For the next several months, it's kind of that's all she talked about was being a grandma. Unfortunately, on the night that we had the whole family at our house so for Justin's birthday party, she passed away. She said that she did not want to die on Justin's birthday, waited until after the midnight hour to pass. Justin took her death especially hard. Justin gave his daughter Lori's middle name, Ann. She never got to meet the beautiful child that Elise and Justin brought into this world. Charlie was Justin's world. A young father, great career, he was living. 
He and Elise raised their daughter, taught her right from wrong, and she continued to be the joys of our lives. Charlie learned about her grandma through Lori's pictures, conversation with us, and visits to the cemetery. Ironically, that's how she will have to learn from now on about her dad. She will learn he was a great guy, fun-loving, super dad. Justin became a pageant dad when Charlie was chosen as a little princess in the Barberton Cherry Blossom Festival. Justin walked around at that stage with a big smile. Definitely a proud dad moment. Charlie loved to go fishing with her dad. They all loved camping in the outdoors. Justin was going to make a sportsman out of this little princess. Now, she will have to learn things to do. She'll have to learn to do things without her dad. She couldn't invite him to her preschool class this year. The day they had donuts with dad. All the other kids were there with their dads. I went in his place. I felt her pain. After we went to the cemetery to visit her dad, where he lays next to his mother, Together we talked, we prayed. She left him with a donut. That made her feel a little bit, little bit better. She had to start her first day of kindergarten without her dad. I went in this place, along with her mother and other family members and a host of 50 law enforcement officers from across the county. We knew this was no substitute for her father, but it was the least we could do. She went to school that day feeling a little bit better. I couldn't even imagine what the rest of Charlie's life would be like without her dad. But obviously she's going to miss several things that a daughter will look to her father to help her through. Charlie will face many challenges ahead without her dad. She is five. I will be there. Her mother will raise her along with all the other support that has been offered because someone wanted to do something because Justin is no longer with us. Kelly, my daughter, Justin's sister will have to go through life without him. Justin was the big brother that gave her hugs when she needed them. He made her laugh when she was down. He was there for her and her family if, if he was ever needed. They were only two years apart. To me, that was the perfect age to raise two children. He was her rock. She relied on him in many ways, many things. He was always there for her, but now all of that has changed. Tiffany, the person who lost a whole future with a man that she adored. Recently engaged, we attended their party as they planned their future. Justin called me from the Bahamas the night they proposed and informed me that she said yes. <coughs> they planned their home to include a room for Charlie. They made a great couple and lived as a family when Charlie came over. Charlie was making preparations for a step -off. Sadly, a few months later, we went from planning their wedding to planning his funeral. Tiffany now goes home to a house that is quiet, lonely, and without Justin. My mother, Justin's grandmother, now in her 90s. Praise constantly that we all get through this somehow. She called me nearly every day to check on us. She was proud of her law enforcement family. My father was also proud to see another wine runner in law enforcement. He instilled in us what his father instilled in him. My father, at nearly 90 years old, went to work that day, went out to dinner with my mother, and died of an aneurysm that evening. He was our foundation that Justin was built on. Justin left behind several relatives that will miss him, his warm heart, his charm, hundreds of friends that will miss his humor and smile. 
the brothers and sisters in blue that have come to be part of our family, to his latest patrol partner, also named Justin. They will have to pick up where 1301 is left off. For the Akron Police Department, great job on their investigation, the collection of evidence, the prosecutor's presentation, flawless. The jury's evaluation decisions, accepted. God was in our courtroom. In fact, his name was mentioned several times. Our laws are based on God's laws. Unfortunately, we're becoming a godless society. We as parents teach our kids to respect one another and respect our laws. Respectability, accountability, they're taught to us. Unfortunately, again, kids are not taught respect in the family. We show little respect for teachers and authority in the schools. Therefore, we'll have little or no respect for police and authority on the streets. This is what led us to where we are today. We need respect. We talked about good parenting. We're all born innocent. Parents need to not teach hate and prejudice. I pray for all the families involved in this tragedy. All of them. To Keenan, I hope that someday you accept accountability and responsibility for what happened. I heard, I'm sorry for what happened. In fact, I heard that from hundreds of people, including you. I heard that I hope God can see you through this. I heard that from a lot of people also, including you. I want you to know that you are responsible for ruining a good family. We will get back up. We will survive. We will move on. But you did a lot of damage. I want you to know that while I may be able to forgive you, that's basically so I could move on myself and my family. Finally, I want you to know that as a parent, I am content standing here, a proud father of a hero that is no longer with us. Knowing the last good deed that Justin did as a police officer was getting you off the streets forever. <laughs>